Hello everyone. Welcome to Sermon on the Go. Today I will be talking about the healing of the man with the withered hand recorded in Mark chapter 3. Jesus entered the synagogue again and a man was there who had a withered hand and the Pharisees kept watching Jesus closely to see whether he will heal and restore him on the Sabbath so they might accuse him and bring a charge against him formally. And he said to the man who had a withered hand, step forward. And he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to lose it? But they kept silence. And when he had looked around at them with vexation and anger, being grieved by the hardness of their heart, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted and held a consultation with the Herodians against him, how they might devise some means to put him to death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, just before I go into my message for today, I want to explain who the Herodians and the Pharisees were. The Herodians were a sect of Hellenistic Jews mentioned in the New Testament on two occasions, first in Galilee and later in Jerusalem, who were always hostile to the ministry of Jesus. And it is recorded in Mark chapter 3, Matthew 22, Luke 13, and also in Acts chapter 4. In each of these cases, their name is occupied with that of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were extremely precise and minute in all matters and issues concerning the law of God. They also indulged in what they called the oral law, a number of traditions that were handed down orally that were not part of the written law of Moses. As I go into my message for today, just bear in mind who these two people are, the Herodians who were always hostile to the ministry of Jesus and the Pharisees who were only interested in keeping religious order in the synagogue. Their system of religion was form rather than substance. The Pharisees were custodians of the Torah, otherwise known as the Law of Moses, or the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, in other words, the Old Testament. The Sabbath was cherished by the Jews as a sacred institution. Of course, God gave the people of Israel the Sabbath after they have come out of Egypt, recorded in Exodus chapter 20 and Nehemiah chapter 9. Jesus began his campaign by healing a man who had been sick for 38 years in John chapter 5 and then followed on with the events recorded in the reading we had today. After healing the man at the pool of Bethsaida, Jesus' next act of Sabbath defiance was to walk through the cornfields on the Sabbath and permit his disciples to pluck the grain and eat it. Jewish tradition stated that there were 39 acts that were strictly forbidden 
on the Sabbath. It was wrong to kindle a fire for cooking. It was wrong to gather fuel. It was wrong to carry burdens or transact business on the Sabbath. But Jewish tradition also went to the extent of informing the people how far they could travel on the Sabbath. 200 cubits based on Joshua chapter 3. In short, the Sabbath day had become a crushing burden and a symbol of religious bondage that had captured the whole nation of Israel. People with physical impairment were usually ostracized from the Jewish community since deformity was viewed as an indication of some terrible sin that the person has committed. And so for this man to be visibly seated in the synagogue suggests that he was planted there and they were watching Jesus, hoping that he would try to heal this man so they could accuse him. Jesus was never concerned with people's threat or the threat of the religious leaders of his day. If something was to be done, he would do it regardless of the outcome. He called this man forward and he turned to his accusers and asked a very significant question. Is it lawful to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill on the Sabbath? But they kept silent. It is ironic that the religious leaders who should be interested in doing what is right were now in the process of doing harm on the Sabbath day. They were plotting how they might kill Jesus because he healed this man on the Sabbath day. It is important to note that Jesus never violated the Sabbath law or indeed violated the Sabbath law by healing this particular man with a withered hand. He didn't even touch the guy. He simply spoke words to this man and his accusers were left with no accusations. Jesus, by healing this man, established his authority to bring freedom and healing to our broken world. I want to finish this message with a few questions. And these are very important questions that you might want to reflect on. Have you become like the Pharisees or the religious leaders who were so concerned not to break the Sabbath law that they were willing to make ordinary people suffer? What are your expectations when you go to church or when you go to a Sunday service? Are you interested in how the church service should be run? Do you go to church to meet Jesus and cast your burdens on him and leave the service free from your burdens? Or do you go to church with a measuring stick to measure how well the preacher will preach and his eloquency in words? Don't be like the Pharisees and the Herodians who were rather concerned of religious order instead of focusing on their relationship with God and to share the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be concerned about your own salvation 
The Bible says we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We should be concerned of our own eternal destination rather than in religious order and in what happens in our church buildings. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you uh, are able to take us from our pain and bring total healing. We thank you for the healing of this man with a withered hand. And we pray that you will help us to continue to know you more and to serve you more and to develop our relationship with you to the level that we are loving our neighbors as ourselves and loving you with all our heart, our souls, our mind and our strength and help us to build your church in our communities. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. My dear friends, I shall see you soon. Shalom. Peace. <laughs>